Get the new perk posters and retro t-shirts today for a limited time. Hi everybody, today we are breaking down the story inside the Blood of the Dead intro cinematic. To start, I want to feature the exceptional post by the Pride 115 He's a popular Spanish YouTuber and you should support his videos. Many community members have speculated that Blood of the Dead takes place after Revelations or between Zetsubo Noshima and Gorod Krovi. Something we have learned is Jason and Craig are not fans of the community telling them how it is. For instance, the community was very aware a Mob of the Dead remake was coming, but suggested it would be the Victus crew playing the map based on the six-part comic series that was released by Dark Horse last year. But then Treyarch said, it doesn't have to be that way, and put Primus as the main crew instead. They did the same thing with the Classified remake. In just a few days, we guessed it was a five remake when the title was released, but then they told us Ultimus would be the crew to be featured on the map. Now that we have an idea about the attitudes of our lead developers of the game mode, we can see how perfectly the Pride 115's theory fits into our storyline. I will read you a majority of his post because his description is spot on. Quote, I would like to quickly summarize the meaning of the paradox of predestination. With an example, imagine that you are the creator of the universe, and that one day you will travel to the past to activate the Big Bang. You are predestined to do it. What happens if you die before traveling in time? A paradox is created. To avoid it, the universe restarts to give you another chance. You are, therefore, trapped in a cycle. However, when you complete the cycle, that is, when you travel to the past and activate the Big Bang, you have fulfilled your purpose. You have reached free will, and you can do whatever you want, even die. Richtofen and the others complete their cycle when they travel to the Great Battle. They were predestined to become Primus and defeat the Apothecons in an ancient age. From that moment, they can now act as they wish, even travel back in time and kill their current versions without creating a paradox. Think about it. They are already free from the cycle. Now they have to go to the house and defeat Monty. If they kill an old version, the cycle will only be restarted for it. But to our heroes post-revelations, the paradox no longer affects them. What I mean is that the version that delivers the blood vials in Blood of the Dead intro cutscene is not the Richtofen of the past. Probably Richtofen post-revelations has traveled to the date, July 4th, 1941, has murdered that earlier version, and has supplanted his identity to deceive the premise who comes from Zetsubo Noshima. Richtofen is very strange in the cutscene. Zetsubo's Richtofen must think, I did not behave like that. And in fact, he did not. This Richtofen has supplanted the identity of his last version for the purpose that we do not know. Guys, we are already changing history, the Cronorium, and breaking the cycle. Only we see it from the perspective of those affected, in this case of the Zetsubo troop. Finally, note that Richtofen of the past does not have the blood vials. He has already spent them. It is not from the past, but the future. End quote. Please leave a comment on his post and give him an upvote for his excellent conclusion. It'll be linked in the description. Why his theory works so well is because it pushes the story forward, but still fits into Treyarch's self-imposed rule that the Aether storyline ends in Revelations. The idea that a Primus team now exists outside the cycle with free will is fantastic. In the trailer, we may be dealing with post-Revelations Richtofen, whose motive surrounds the idea that they must sacrifice all their versions so the innocent kid version will live. There is a great hint that the angry Richtofen just killed the real Richtofen that was supposed to meet the Zet crew. We hear this quote when we spawn into the giant. I must work quickly. There's so much to do. The, the vessel from Axis, the radius, the opening of the gateway. Nine! I'm getting confused. Curse these 115 induced delusions! Yeah, you remember. There's so much to do. The opening of the gateways. Are you sure you're not getting confused? When Richtofen kills himself in the giant, he gets clouded by 115 delusions and starts recounting origins. It happens in our trailer. 
The Cronorium is changed because he has messed up the timeline. But something to know about the Cronorium is it changes depending on who is reading it. If Dempsey was to pick up the book, it would look a lot different than if Nikolai was to pick it up and read it himself. The Pride 115's theory helps us explain the children. It fits right into why they were introduced. Children are typically represented thematically as innocence and purity. They are examples of people completely untouched by the horrors of our game. Potentially, when there are only children virgins left, it could mean there are no more zombies and the Aether universe is saved. There's a possibility that our characters are trying to kill off Monty too, which is why post-revelations were tough and maybe trying to set a new set of events into motion. Jason and Craig found a way to make this happen after Revelation and during the Zet and Gorod trip. We find our team of heroes constantly beating any force put in front of them, including gods, but now they are being forced to defeat themselves, which can prove to be a much tougher battle. It isn't as simple as pull the trigger and shoot when there are many different versions running around space and time. Blood of the Dead seems to take place after Revelations in a time where Richtofen is meddling. Even if the Pride of 115's post isn't completely accurate, we can see a fracture has occurred. In the comic, we see how the exchange goes. Dempsey is the one to check on Misty, not Nikolai. The doctors are happy to see each other, not angry, or having 115 delusions. It is not the quick trip our characters comment on in Revelations. Since there are two Richtofens, we are seeing Blood of the Dead take place during both of the community's hypotheses. Another thing to point out is Brutus knocking out the portal. There could be significance to him escaping the cycle this way. Brutus was originally Stanley Ferguson, who was killed in Mob of the Dead and forced to relive the same cycle with the Mob of the Dead crew. The trailer doesn't give me enough to draw conclusions at the moment, but it is something we should be on the lookout for while playing. We will most likely have the questions answered like, what is breaking the cycle in Mob of the Dead? Why did we see the Alcatraz plane in the giant in SOE? How does the giant opening cutscene fit into the change in time? How do the giant radios fit into these new crews? And why does Weasel know Nikolai's name? I couldn't be happier with Blood of the Dead because this story can go many interesting directions. We could be seeing one of the failed premise groups in a fractured universe where they die. We could be seeing a post-revelations Richtofen changing the cycle and timeline for reasons unknown. We could be getting an untold part of the timeline that will fit perfectly into the cycle. All options will be fun to explore in Black Ops 4. Please share your thoughts on the story in the comments or on my Discord. My community loves talking zombie theories. They are great at workshopping ideas to figure out what's going on. Make sure to subscribe if you're interested in my coverage of Black Ops 4 zombie tutorials, explanations, and streams, and much more will be coming. If you want to support the videos and get cool merchandise, stick around for the ad at the end of the video. Otherwise, I hope you have a fantastic day, and I will see you in the next video. From July 19th through August 3rd, the perk posters are back. Due to viewer requests, I have brought them back for a two week period. With Black Ops 4 on the horizon, this will be one of the last times I will run these posters. But wait, what if you're tired of these damn posters? I mean, there's a pack to buy 26 of them. That's only $2.50 a poster. Well, good news. I have 100% cotton t-shirts available now. There are two designs to choose from, from sizes small to extra large. Head over to radrendering.com to pick up the merch and support the channel while supplying last.